from the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet. We're coming to you live from the CCRS studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome, everybody, and welcome, fellow patriots. Welcome once again to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. I am Rick Trader, coming to you live from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM, 24-7. We are everywhere. We are everywhere. And joining me today as my co-host is the Patriot from the Hoosier State, J.D. Manier. J. Welcome to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. Great to be with you, Rick. One week later, and uh, boy, things have been heating up in this campaign for the presidency. And, but just great to be with you. Always is. Great to have you with us, J.D. And when you talk about heating up, uh, what's caught your attention this past week? Oh, a few things. But the FBI documents, you know, released over the holiday weekend, confirmed the Hillary team was caught destroying evidence, lying to Congress. None of the 13 mobile devices were made available to the FBI, unsecure mobile devices, 13 of them, Mm. mind you. And so they destroyed phones. And, you know, you believe, you can't possibly believe, nobody in America with any common sense could believe that she doesn't understand what a classified document with a big C means. Uh, she wanted to claim that it, it was, she thought it was alphabetical, A, B, C, D, E. <laughs> well, uh, J.D., this is just another reason, another example of why this woman is not qualified to be president. Either she's too stupid to be president or too arrogant to be president. Either way, she's disqualified. And you know, JD, all the things that you mentioned, lying to Congress, lying to the FBI, hiding and destroying evidence, you know, where would you and I be if we did that kind of thing? Yeah. Orange jumpsuits. Yeah, orange uh, jumpsuits, all right. Don't bend over in the shower. But that's where we would be. We would be in federal prison. Anybody would be in federal prison. Why she's not? Why she's not? Why she's running the streets of America? I have no idea. No idea. Yeah, you know, I, I watched her coughing uh, space there uh, in Cleveland outdoors, and she couldn't hardly get a word out. She kept drinking water, and she says, "Well, just the antihistamines didn't kick in." Yeah, antihistamines, uh, but. She she, she doesn't look real hale. I mean, she, she's not a real strong person physically. Uh, and I think what we're going to be facing and are facing right now, and our commander-in-chief needs to be a warrior uh, combating jihadism, combating what's going on. You've got Russia, North Korea, Iran, China, and uh, she doesn't look... Well, I've watched her in the left. Once they, oh my gosh, well, you're way over the top here. She's released her health records, but I'm sorry. Uh, uh, you know, I my eyes show a person who who, who is is weak physically right now. Well, JD, I am not a doctor. I just play one on television sometimes here in the radio. But doesn't hay fever make you sneeze? Isn't it sneezy? watery eyes aren't those the symptoms of allergies I mean like when I get allergies and this is the allergy season and I've been been there done that to uh, take the antihistamines and stuff like that and usually JD it's not for coughing it's for sneezing 
It's for runny, itchy eyes. It's for things like that. She wasn't, she wasn't displaying those symptoms. It was this cough. And I think that this cough has nothing to do with allergies. It has more to do with some other underlying reason for which she refuses to release her medical records. You know, I, well, I don't know this one but personally, but uh, to me, her voice, the cough, didn't sound like allergies to me. It sounds like a smoker's cough because she has a smoker's voice. She has this rasp, deep voice, a voice very similar, very similar to those of people who smoke a lot. And I think that that's my diagnosis of what her cough is coming from. Well, yeah, her campaign schedule isn't much. Uh, at, at all, I mean, you know, she's been so cloistered away from the media and and and, and interviews, uh, and she, she doesn't get out. She, she didn't. She didn't want to go to Mexico. She didn't want to go to Louisiana. Uh, she only seems to go to places where they have fundraisers, Martha Vineyard or Hollywood. Uh, yeah, she was in Cleveland recently, but you know, talking about answering the three o'clock call at night, she didn't at Benghazi. And, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know, does she sleep 10 hours a day, eight hours a day? Is she just wore out? I, I, it's hard to say. Well, there's, I think, there's other videos I, out there think, of her needing assistance to walk up steps. There's other videos out there where her, her head is shaking violently and her eyes are blinking uncontrollably. I mean, she's calling for Donald Records tax, tax records. Yeah, that's fair, but let's see both of their health records. All right, I'm just not calling for Hillary's health records. Let's let's call for both candidates' health records. Or how about this? Both of these candidates be go through physical examinations by independent sources, independent doctors. Let's find out what's really behind the coughing, the head bobbing, the twitching, the in- inability to walk steps. Let's find out who the real Hillary Clinton is, at least medically. We already know she's a pathological liar and a crook. But other than that, that I, other than that, I have no opinion of her. All right. <laughs> hey, her commercial f bombs and nuclear bombs. Uh, I, I got to say something before our break. I, uh, All right, oh, go ahead. She she speaks. We, we have Secret Service agents who have written books about, I mean, talk about loading up with F-bombs and swearing and people running for cover. She has a terrible temper. I mean, she's thrown Bibles at the back of the head and skillets and everything else at, at, at uh, Bill. But, uh, you know, to use the the time when Vicente Fox, that's what, you watch those commercials. He, he wasn't using an F-bomb uh, other than to quote Vicente Fox. They try to twist uh, F bombs for Trump, and then the nuclear bombs. This this is the latest spate of commercials, hearkening back to uh, Barry Goldwater. And but I just want to say this to our radio audience: Hillary has gone on record saying she will respond militarily, militarily, excuse me, to Russia uh, if if just because of uh, hacking. You know, hacking. What it be the Democrat Party or her her emails <laughs> and. Or her, or her uh, coughing fits, you know? Yeah, and I'll tell you, we don't want to get in a nuclear exchange with Russia. They, are, they have got second and third generation. We've had people on our show who are experts. They are ahead of us considerably, given the Obama administration and what we've done over the years. And uh, uh, she is the one who could bring us to nuclear exchange, and it wouldn't be pretty. Uh, not Donald Trump. And I want people to know that on the record. L- listen to her statements. They're rash. She goes, we will respond militarily to and, and see and cyber war, cyber hacking to her is an act of war with Russia. Are you kidding me? Uh, Got to yeah. point that out, Rick. Yeah, that's uh, she. Good. She's dangerous. She is. Hey, J.D., you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show with J.D. Muneer and Rick Trader coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, TalkStream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, 
iHeartRadio AM FM 24-7. Today's show is being brought to you by the First Amendment and protected by the Second. J.D. and I will be right back. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We are establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired of the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 2 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 on your AM dial, or around the world on the Internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our website, CCRSNetwork.com, for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where now even more newsmakers go to be heard. Since 2011, we have been calling for a national commitment from all Americans to participate in an annual event to honor all of the victims and their families who suffered during and after the most devastating event to ever take place on American soil. We all remember those horrible scenes of destruction on September 11, 2001 that unfolded right before our eyes, either up front or on television. We continue to ask every American to participate in the united action of prayer, which is simply to stop whatever you are doing at precisely 9 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. to either observe one minute of silence or to offer a prayer to honor the memory of those who are directly affected by this unforgettable scene of destruction. Please include a prayer of thanks for living in a country where even something as horrific as 9-11 could not weaken our spirit. This year, we would like to ask one more thing as a show of unity since we are still fighting with the enemy who caused the 9-11 tragedy. Would you display the flag for the day at your home, on your car, bike, or anywhere you can display old glory? Let's show our enemies that we can still unite in our love for our country. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. Welcome back to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with J.D. Minear and yours truly, Rick Trader. And for rebroadcasts, please check out our websites, ccrshow.com or ccrsnetwork.com. Or at 12 noon, log on to roarradio.net or roar 11 p.m. Eastern Time, log on to highplainsdailynews.com. Or you can hear our show in all the shows that are part of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network from your telephone by calling 832-999-1199. So, J.D., who are our guests today? We've got a great lineup, Rick. Starting at 335, Jason Sneed of the Heritage Foundation. I called him about 30 minutes ago, and uh, he's cleared for takeoff to talk about the FAA new drone regulations, Mm -hmm. which spill over into hobbies. I mean, if you've got a a, a, a toy drone airplane, uh, they've got this database the Obama administration wants to roll out, register you, heavy fines if you use it in the wrong way. (laughs) We've got to talk about this. Over-regulation, over-criminalization, that's the hallmark of Hillary, the left, and Obama. And Jason Sneed is an expert with Heritage, going to talk about that. 335. Okay. Uh, hey, one of our friends, John Guandalo, Understanding the Threat. John is a Naval Academy graduate in 1989. He, he went on to uh, Ranger School, worked with the FBI. And we're looking at the 15-year anniversary of 9-11 this coming Sunday. John had a special role uh, clearing the debris and investigating uh, the aftermath at the Pentagon. When the plane crashed in there 15 years ago, uh, he's going to talk about jihadism, combating it, a little bit of comparison between Hillary and Trump. And we, we love having John on the show. That's at 405. And then you've got a guy we, we love having on the show, too, Seton Motley, the organization called Less Government. 
and he's going to talk about Google uh, shilling for Hillary. Basically, you you put in uh, search uh, on the search engine Google, and you try to find stuff on Hillary and her corruption, her criminalization, uh, uh, her health, and you hardly come up with anything, according to Seton. And he he's going to be a great guy to, to to show us what's going on out there in Silicon Valley and in Hollywood and so many different institutions of the left that uh, that are deeply in Hillary's pocket. Love having Seton join us on the Conservative Commandos radio show because I love the title of his organization there, Less Government. Gotta love that, right, J.D.? Uh, hey, uh, J.D., I have a little surprise for you. I want to uh, play a little piece of audio from a video it's actually, and you know, you made me think about it because you were talking about Hillary Clinton spending money on commercials, right? So this is the audio from one of Hillary Clinton's commercials. And Mr. John Forsyth Jr., please play that for us. I'm Hillary Clinton, and I approve this message. How do we make the economy work for everyone? Hillary Clinton's plan starts here by making big corporations and those at the top finally pay their fair share in taxes. And those companies that move overseas, she'd charge them an exit tax. Then she'd use that money to make the largest investment in creating good paying jobs since World War II. Millions of jobs. You can read the plan here. So here she is. Here's a commercial saying that once again we got another politician who says they're going to charge those big, mean, awful companies more taxes. We're going to make them pay their fair share. And I only bring this up, J.D., to remind our audience, corporations don't pay taxes. Corporations collect taxes. And they collect taxes from everyone who goes to them for goods or services. And that's you and I, the consumer out there. And then he's, she's going to hold up these companies from leaving the country and charge them an exit tax, another tax. And again, corporations don't pay taxes. I just told you who does that. And she's going to use these taxes per, to produce millions of Millions, that's what the commercial says. Millions of high-paying jobs. Well, what's a high-paying job? Is a high-paying job a job making $50,000? I, I don't know today. But she's going to use this money to produce millions of these jobs. And I'm just playing this for you and our audience, J.D., to make a point that this woman has no idea what to do. Well, Rick, I listened to that. Remember she says the biggest investment, largest investment since World War II? We just went through Obama's first term when the Democrats controlled every house, every chamber up there in Washington, stimulus one and two. That was over a trillion dollars. That, uh, by all accounts, her new job cost the taxpayer anywhere from 300000 to a half a million dollars to create one job. Shovel ready, it was not. And so she's going to double down and make the, the stimulus package. She says that the largest is World War II. That means she's going to make stimulus one and two uh, be, be in the rearview mirror. And she's going to double down and make that louder. That is going to be uh, a total, total... A disaster. We, we, we had the 8, 9, 10, 11% unemployment earlier in the Obama, uh, and we still do, except they, they lie about the figures. But we had that when we had these stimulus. And she's going to make a bigger stimulus than that. She's going to have more taxes than Obama even wrought on, on the corporate America. This is crazy, Rick. Oh, it is crazy. And, you know, this is coming from a woman who has never held a a private job outside the Rose Law Firm, I think from which she lost her license to practice law. She's never, she's never created a company. She's never started a business. She's never really hired anybody unless you want to call Uma somebody she's hired or 
maybe the people that she paid to scrub her servers or smash their her i her blackberries with sledgehammers she's never hired anybody she's never started a business she's never created any money but she sure knows how to tax and that's all her commercials about also she talks about 500 installing 500 million solar panels now let's talk a minute we only have a minute or two left before our next break about solar panels number one all these solar panels come from overseas. They all come from China. None of them are being made here. She talks about jobs being created from green energy. Where are these jobs going to come from to install these solar panels? These are part-time jobs at best because once the solar panel is installed, it's installed, Okay. 500 million solar panels? What? How many acres of forest is she going to have to destroy to do this? 500 million solar panels? And then they're going to force the American public to buy the energy produced by these solar panels. And because these solar panels are so efficient, because they only work when the sun shines, and a myriad of other reasons, the power generated by these solar panels costs six times, six times the amount that cost to get energy from conventional sources, gas, coal, oil, or nuclear. You know who pays that six times price increase? Yep, the consumer, J.D., you and I, everybody who pays the electric bill. So how is Hillary's plan going to help America? I'm asking, help me, somebody out there, how is Hillary's plan going to help America? And let me just take 30 seconds to say, Donald Trump, as you know, if you're a listener to this show, he was not the guy I wanted. He, in fact, he was rather low on my list. He was down there with Jeb Bush, but he's the guy who's running against Hillary Clinton. I'll say one thing for Donald. He's the man that has produced jobs, that has built businesses. I would like to think that he knows what it takes to put America back to work. And you are listening to the Conservative Commandos radio show with J.D. Minear and Rick Trader coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos radio network at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeart Radio, AM, FM 24-7. Don't go away. Our first guest, Jason Sneed, will be right with us. This is Rick Trader, host of the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpcc.com. CRS.com right now and make a donation by credit card or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime studio time and pay our own expenses we created the show because we are trying to make a difference so can you help the ccrs expose the truth in 2014 and beyond go to www.helpccrs.com help keep the conservative commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com and make a donation today to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. 
Since 2011, we have been calling for a national commitment from all Americans to participate in an annual event to honor all of the victims and their families who suffered during and after the most devastating event to ever take place on American soil. We all remember those horrible scenes of destruction on September 11, 2001 that unfolded right before our eyes, either up front or on television. We continue to ask every American to participate in the united action of prayer, which is simply to stop whatever you are doing at precisely 9 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. to either observe one minute of silence or to offer a prayer to honor the memory of those who are directly affected by this unforgettable scene of destruction. Please include a prayer of thanks for living in a country where even something as horrific as 9-11 could not weaken our spirit. This year, we would like to ask one more thing as a show of unity since we are still fighting with the enemy who caused the 9-11 tragedy. Would you display the flag for the day at your home, on your car, bike, or anywhere you can display old glory? Let's show our enemies that we can still unite in our love for our country. I'm Pastor Christina Lamineer. I'm a concerned mother and grandmother, and I urge you to vote for Donald Trump. Our Commander-in-Chief's highest priority is to secure the safety and freedom of Americans of every race, creed, and color. Trump will solve the ISIS crisis quickly and utilize the talents of people like Mayor Rudy Giuliani to restore law and order in our streets. Donald Trump will build a wall, secure our borders, and bring back jobs and prosperity to America by slashing tax taxes, cutting government waste, stamping out political correctness, harnessing our abundant natural resources, unleashing the patriotism and genius of we the people. Always remember, there is a special place in heaven for followers of Jesus Christ. For more information, log on to INRASuperPAC.com. INRA Super PAC paid for this ad and is solely responsible for its content, not authorized by any candidate or its committee. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems program, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCS4Automation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We're establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired as I am about the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every week day from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on WNJC Radio 1360 a.m. or around the world on the internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our websites, ConservativeCommandosRadioNetwork.com and CCRN.com for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet. We're coming to you live from the CCRS studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. 
This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. This is J.D. Minear, and your host, Rick Trader. If you'd like to hear rebroadcast of today's show, just check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com and ccrshow.com. Or at noontime, log on to roarradio.net. And at 11 p.m. in the evening, log on to highplanedailynews.com. You can listen to Conservative Commandos from any phone by calling 832-999-1199. Our next guest, Jason Sneed, is a policy analyst in the Edwin Meese III Center for Legal and Judicial Studies at the Heritage Foundation. Sneed has written extensively on the need to reform the nation's civil asset forfeiture laws. He also researches and writes on issues such as economic liberties and the sharing economy and criminal justice reform and policing. Welcome to the Concerted Commandos radio show, Jason. Thank you for having me. You have written about these new FAA rules on drone users. Uh, Characterize what's coming coming at the American people now through the FAA. Uh, Yes, so what's happening right now is that last week... The Federal Aviation Administration released its first set of uh, commercial drone regulations, and the agency has billed this as really a, an opening of the skies, if you will, to, uh, to entrepreneurs who want to use drones in their commercial activities. But what we're actually seeing is that this is less an opening of the skies and more of a doubling down on a heavily bureaucratic, uh, regulatory, and hyper-cautious approach that the FAA has been using for years. And the result of all of this is that the drone industry is really being stifled, the major innovations are being driven overseas, and American consumers are losing out on all of the benefits of, uh, of this drone technology because regulators at the FAA aren't comfortable with it. Jason, now what about the will of the people? In 2012, a law passed by Congress was to enable hobbyists to have exemptions and not be treated like commercial companies. What's going on here? Well, you know, it's actually quite uh, quite interesting. A lot of times when you make arguments about bureaucratic overreach, you're, you're met with this counter-argument that, oh, you're arguing a slippery slope, and it takes a considerable amount of time before you actually get down that slippery slope. But here we're seeing quite remarkably fast the the level of overreach the FAA has has taken in the drone space in 2012 congress did pass a law in which they said that uh, the FAA cannot promulgate new rules or regulations in the recreational drone space and yet now today we're hearing from the FAA that not only have they you know gone back and in, uh, in December of last year promulgated such a rule now these commercial rules are actually going to be applying to a fair number of hobbyists. And the, the way that they're kind of getting around the will of Congress is by refusing to define one term, uh, a community-based organization. And because a hobbyist doesn't know what this uh, you know, community-based organization is, they could at any moment, even if they join an organization they think satisfies the definition, they could be faced with civil fines that number in the tens of thousands of dollars. And we've seen people face these before. So essentially, the FAA is trying to scare everybody into complying with rules that Congress didn't think they should. Wow. You, you got to be a community uh, hobbyist organizer and register in some kind of database if, you, if you've got a, a toy uh, hobby, if you will, helicopter, drone. Uh, help me out with this. Uh, yeah. it, 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 uh, it, and Lockheed F-35, the British Harrier, you know, there's replicas of those uh, vertical takeoff and land capability planes. I mean, people love flying their, their planes in their backyard, that kind of thing, uh, or in parks and, and areas. Uh, are they going to come under the watchful eye of the FAA now, turning toys into criminal liabilities? Is that what's going to happen? Well, it, you know, it, it certainly seems like they're laying the foundation to do just that if, the, if they want to in the future. And again, I think that it really comes back to trying to scare people into regulatory compliance. Um, you know, we, we, we saw in October of last year, so just about a year ago, when the FAA did uh, what really is a, a rather amazing about face. For decades, they had said in all manner of, of reports, publications, etc., that these sorts of, of model aircraft are not aircraft 
for the purposes of federal law and regulation and are beyond the regulatory scope of the FAA's authority, then suddenly when drones get popular, they pretend that that was actually never the case and that they had always thought that this was, that these were aircraft within their regulatory scope and that they had simply, you know, graciously allowed hobbyists to use these drones or the, the predecessors to modern drones without regulatory uh, interference. And now we're seeing that because they've determined that their aircraft no different than a 747, all of these criminal laws which are put in place to you know, penalize people who shoot down a manned aircraft, uh, for example, all of these criminal laws apply to drones. But the problem is that you know, it's very easy for a drone to crash, and yet you could wind up in prison for 20 years if some, uh, if some prosecutor decided that they wanted to take this case. And you know, We've seen prosecutors take absurdly stretched definitions under, under criminal laws before to make prosecutions against people, and we've seen the consequences of that. Well, my mind races to, to, to my teen years and, and boyhood years. And so, you know, BB guns and you would go out. And so, you know, you've got your hobby uh, drone, helicopter, whatever it would be. And you're out there. And, and if, you, if you'd like to say pull and, and shoot it down and laugh and have fun, you, you could end up in jail, couldn't you, for a number of years? Because they're equating that to, 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 to like having a, a shoulder-fired rocket and taking down a 747. <laughs> That's that's exactly the case, and in fact, just to give you and the uh, the listeners an idea of exactly how absurd this is, there are criminal laws in the books for pointing uh, and uh, pointing a laser pointer at an aircraft. The now that seems to make uh, perfectly valid sense to me if you're dealing with a manned aircraft that has a pilot, because of course lasers can blind pilots, and that endangers everybody on board, potentially hundreds of lives. But just um, a few weeks ago, I wrote about a company which is reproducing Star Wars replica, uh, you know, X-wing fighters and the Millennium Falcon, and they all have lasers on it so that you can essentially play laser tag and recreate some of the Star Wars battles. Now, if you play with those toys the way that they're advertised, under under the law as it's interpreted by the FAA, you would actually be committing any number of federal felonies, and you could actually wind up in prison for playing in your backyard with a toy. It's absolutely absurd. What, what Remind us what, what some of these uh, heinous fines and violations, how stiff can they be? Remind our listeners about this. This is amazing. Sure. Well, you know, on the uh, on the civil side, you're you're looking at a civil fine of eleven hundred dollars per violation of FAA uh, of FAA, FAA regulations. Federal aviation regulations is what they're known as. On the criminal side, uh, you're looking at just for failing to register as a drone owner, um, which all recreational drone owners who own a drone that weighs more than zero point five five pounds have to register. Simply failing to register yourself as a drone owner subjects you to a theoretical maximum of two. $277,500 in uh, criminal and civil fines and three years imprisonment. Uh, responsibility for downing an aircraft can land you in prison for 20 years. Um, so we're looking at some incredibly stiff, incredibly stiff criminal and civil penalties. And in fact, last year, when the FAA was first considering regulating recreational drone owners, again, in direct contravention of everything which Congress had laid forward in the, or laid forth in the 2012 law, their own task force studying the issue said that the criminal and civil penalties in place were not, um, were not fit to the, uh, to the toy drone space, and yet the FAA went ahead and put forward these regulations anyway. Uh, Jason, we're up against a hard commercial break. Can you hold with us for just a few minutes? We're going to go to some commercials and want to come right back with you. Absolutely. This is J.D. and Rick Trader coming to you live from the Concerted Commandos Radio Network Studios, WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia, and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, and AM FM 24-7. K-98 
Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We are establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired of the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 2 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 on your AM dial, or around the world on the Internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our website, CCRSNetwork.com, for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where now even more newsmakers go to be heard. Since 2011, we have been calling for a national commitment from all Americans to participate in an annual event to honor all of the victims and their families who suffered during and after the most devastating event to ever take place on American soil. We all remember those horrible scenes of destruction on September 11th, 2001 that unfolded right before our eyes, either up front or on television. We continue to ask every American to participate in the united action of prayer, which is simply to stop whatever you are doing at precisely 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. to either observe one minute of silence or to offer a prayer to honor the memory of those who are directly affected by this unforgettable scene of destruction. Please include a prayer of thanks for living in a country where even something as horrific as 9-11 could not weaken our spirit. This year, we would like to ask one more thing as a show of unity since we are still fighting with the enemy who caused the 9-11 tragedy. Would you display the flag for the day at your home, on your car, bike, or anywhere you can display old glory? Let's show our enemies that we can still unite in our love for our country. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. If you'd like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, check out our website, ctrsnetwork.com and ctrshow.com. And at noontime, log on to RoarRadio.net. And at 11 p.m. in the evening, log on to HighPlainDailyNews.com. You can listen to Concerted Commandos from any phone by calling 832-999-1199. Our guest is Jason Sneed from the Heritage Foundation. We're talking about these new rules promulgated by the FAA on drone usage. Welcome back to the show, Jason. It's great to be here. Hey, our host, Rick Trader, he's got some questions, and uh, I know he is a pilot, and i really looking forward to what he has to say. I'm going to take it away there. Jason, uh, thanks for joining us today on the Conservative Commandos radio show. Jason, to your knowledge, has there been any kind of accidents or mishaps be, uh, done by any, any drones, other than well, the ones we fly over Iraq and Syria on occasion? Yeah, so so it really is. I'm glad you you mentioned that. It really is important to distinguish the type of drones that we're talking about here from the type of drones that people might be familiar with. These are not military aircraft or, you know, the the, the large uh, missile-wielding type that we use to take out terrorists. These are are, are small units that weigh a few pounds that are are maybe a foot across or so in some cases. Mm -hmm. And um, and in many cases, they're toys uh, that sell for a couple of hundred bucks. And to answer your question, there has been uh, there has been no instant that the uh, FAA can point to where there's been a confirmed collision between, uh, for example, a manned uh, a manned aircraft and one of these small recreational drones. Jason, a lot of times you'll be driving around and you'll pass a, a field or a farm and you'll see these guys out there with their remote controlled airplanes and helicopters. Is there any difference between those toys and drones? Well, no, not really. Um, yeah. So the the rules are talking about for drones would be also passed on to remote controlled aircraft. Uh, yes, they 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 will indeed apply. You know, drones is uh, is just sort of a vernacular term which has been adopted by uh, by all of us to talk about these little quadcopters. But mm-hmm. the the mm-hmm. rule would would you know theoretically apply to any remote controlled aircraft. There's mm-hmm. no real distinction between. Uh, you know, the, the hobbyist uh, aircraft of yore and the drones today. And in fact, as I mentioned earlier, you know, even though these new Part 107 rules are designed to be applied to recreate or commercial.
commercial actors, excuse me, a great number of recreational flyers who uh, who are flying right now will wind up being uh, being subject to them because of the, the lack of definition of some of these key terms like community-based organization. Jason, I've seen things in the newspaper where Amazon has plans of at some time in the future using drones to deliver packages. And right now, any, t- any day of the week, you can drive down the road and, and see a, a white van with an A on it. That's one of those Amazon uh, delivery vans. I cannot imagine a day when companies like Amazon are using drones to deliver packages across towns, across states, across municipalities. And the reason for that is we're talking about other, you know, the remote control aircraft. Well, they can be directed within range or within sight of the operator. These drones that, for instance, what Amazon is talking about will not be in in eyesight of an individual. They will they will be remotely controlled to go over great distances. And my concern as a pilot is for not just for safety of other aircraft, and some aircraft fly at 1,000 feet, 2,500 feet, whatever, but uh, also the potential misuse of these aircraft. And, you know, Jason... I started something called the Conservative Commandos Radio Show because I believe in less government. In fact, one of our guests later on in the show, Seton Motley, is from an organization called Less Government because I promote that. But as a pilot, I could see where there are some needs for regulations. No, I absolutely agree with you. The um, the sort of regulations that I think are, are perfectly justifiable in this space are are you know safety based regulations that have a, a genuine nexus mm-hmm. to the issues of airspace safety. I, I absolutely agree with that. I could I could envision, for example, um, an FAA rule. In fact, the FAA has promulgated a similar rule saying that drones cannot enter the navigable airspace, which generally begins at about five hundred feet above ground level and I, I certainly am in favor of rules which uh, which say that drones shall not enter within a certain reasonable radius of uh, an airport or national security installation or, or, or you know some similar requirements like that but the mm-hmm. the concern that I have with the broader regulations which we are seeing promulgated by the FAA the, the type of regulations that say that no nobody can operate a drone beyond line of sight at any point that nobody can fly at night that nobody can do uh, some of these things which other countries are allowing to be done right now without incident uh, is that we're basically stifling these these technological innovations and we're only allowing innovation at a pace which government finds acceptable and I don't think that that's going to keep the US on the cutting edge of this technology for very long Jason are you familiar with ultralights uh, ultralight aircraft, yeah. Ultralight aircraft. Um, as a pilot, as someone who's flown ultralights, do you know that ultralights are not considered an aircraft? They're considered an, the, a recreational vehicle. In I, fact, the FAA has chosen not to promulgate federal regulations regarding pilot certification, vehicle certification, or vehicle registration, preferring that the ultralight community assume the initiative for the development of these important safety programs. The ultralight community has taken positive action to vet to develop programs almost two decades ago, gaining FAA approval for their implementation. Uh, and the reason I'm reading this to you, Jason, is do you see that what I'm saying here, the FAA doesn't see these aircraft that people in many cases build on their own and actually fly. In fact, I've, I've flown one of these aircraft around the country up to Alaska and back. So they do have the capability to to travel great distances. But do you, can you see a time where the FAA or the federal government institutes similar laws with recreational users as drones as they do with ultralight aircraft 
that they are to be self-regulated under an independent government body, governing body, not government body, but an independent government governing body. Well, you know, to be honest with you, I can't really see the FAA adopting that approach with drones for several reasons. Um, First of all, you know, Congress in 2012 passed a law which basically required that the FAA adopt that approach. And, uh, and yet the FAA is still promulgating rules and regulations in the drone space, despite the text of the 2012 FAA, uh, FAA reauthorization statute. And then second, the, when you look at the, with the whole picture of how the FAA is approaching drones, it really does strike me as, as a grand design on the part of the FAA to really put itself in the driver's seat of the entire drone industry. And from that perspective, it wouldn't make sense to allow recreational users to be essentially self-regulating because that would undercut the validity of the argument for regulation in the first place, that these drones are so inherently dangerous that they require federal regulation in order to be made safe. And so unfortunately, I can't see that. But it is interesting that um, one gentleman who is is suing the FAA right now uh, over the recreational drone rules points out that they are inherently irrational, and he actually points to the example that aircraft, ultralight aircraft that weigh several hundred pounds and carry human occupants are actually subjected to significantly less federal regulation than a toy that mm-hmm. weighs, uh, by the FAA's own count, uh, the, the weight of two sticks of butter. I'm glad you picked up on that, Jason, because that's one of the points that I was trying to make. Hey, Jason, I'll make one last comment, and I'll throw it to back to J.D., because I know he has another question for you. But, uh, Jason, you know when, as a pilot, you're having a bad day? is when you're approached by an individual and they say, we're here from the FAA and we're here to help you. You know you're about to have a bad day. Back to you, J.D. (laughs) Jason, what about medicine uh, being flown in in rural areas, in emergency cases or or places where people need this stuff? Uh, FAA looks like they're, they're clamping down. You can't even do that. Tell me about that. Yeah, so this uh, this goes back to a few points that we were talking about very briefly earlier. Right now, the Part 107 rules that were just put into effect do not allow drones to fly beyond the line of sight of an operator. An operator can't, uh, you know, perform a supervisory role and fly more than one drone at a time. Uh, they can't fly at night. And with those kinds of restrictions in place, you can't really adopt any type of of delivery-based service. So whether that's Amazon package delivery or, in the case of a company uh, like Zipline, for example, uh, you can't use drones to deliver emergency medical supplies to remote areas. And this company, Zipline, is actually deployed in Rwanda, and they're using using fixed-wing drones, which are slightly different than the quadcopters that we were talking about before, to deliver medical supplies to areas in, uh, in you know, 15 minutes that would take hours or possibly even days in some cases to get these supplies. So it's a true life-saving uh, technology here. But because of the restrictions in place by the FAA, that technology cannot be deployed to the United States without a waiver. And so the FAA has actually, at a recent <laughs> White House summit, they highlighted this technology. Um, they highlighted its beneficial applications within the United States. And yet they still insist that these companies go through this waiver process, which requires an ad hoc review by the FAA. Every company that wants to use a technology in a way which is not generally approved as, of has to go through this. And that can take months. And so despite the... Jason, we're coming up on a hard break. It's been great okay. listening to you on this subject. How can our radio audience read your works? Do you have a blog or real quickly a website they can go to? Uh, yes, if you go to heritage.org or the Daily Signal, um, either of those sites have my have my work. And uh, I've worked here on on multitude of papers and blog posts talking about this and other issues. It's, it's an active issue. I'll keep writing about it. And, uh, you know, I, I thank you and your audience for their time. God bless. Thank you so much, Jason. Thank you. This is J.D. and your host, Rick Trader. And we're coming to you live from the Concerted Commanders Radio Network Studios, WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeart Radio, and AM FM 24-7.
This is Rick Trader, host of the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos Radio Show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpcc.com. CRS.com right now and make a donation by credit card or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime, studio time, and pay our own expenses. We created the show because we are trying to make a difference. So can you help the CCRS expose the truth in 2014 and beyond? Go to www.helpccrs.com. Help keep the Conservative Commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com and make a donation today to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. Since 2011, we have been calling for a national commitment from all Americans to participate in an annual event to honor all of the victims and their families who suffered during and after the most devastating event to ever take place on American soil. We all remember those horrible scenes of destruction on September 11, 2001 that unfolded right before our eyes, either up front or on television. We continue to ask every American to participate in the united action of prayer, which is simply to stop whatever you are doing at precisely 9 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. to either observe one minute of silence or to offer a prayer to honor the memory of those who are directly affected by this unforgettable scene of destruction. Please include a prayer of thanks for living in a country where even something as horrific as 9-11 could not weaken our spirit. This year, we would like to ask one more thing as a show of unity since we are still fighting with the enemy who caused the 9-11 tragedy. Would you display the flag for the day at your home, on your car, bike, or anywhere you can display old glory? Let's show our enemies that we can still unite in our love for our country. I'm Pastor Christina Lamineer. I'm a concerned mother and grandmother, and I urge you to vote for Donald Trump. Our Commander-in-Chief's highest priority is to secure the safety and freedom of Americans of every race, creed, and color. Trump will solve the ISIS crisis quickly and utilize the talents of people like Mayor Rudy Giuliani to restore law and order in our streets. Donald Trump will build a wall, secure our borders, and bring back jobs and prosperity to America by slashing taxes, cutting government waste, stamping out political correctness, harnessing our abundant natural resources, unleashing the patriotism and genius of we the people. Always remember, there is a special place in heaven for followers of Jesus Christ. For more information, log on to INRASuperPAC.com. INRA Super PAC paid for this ad and is solely responsible for its content, not authorized by any candidate or its committee. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCS4Automation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We're establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired as I am about the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? 
Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on WNJC Radio 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our websites, conservativecommandosradionetwork.com and ccrn.com for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet. We're coming to you live from the CCRS studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. And this is J.D. Manier and your host, Rick Trader. If you'd like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, just check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com and ccrshow.com, or at noontime, log on to roarradio.net. And at 11 p.m. in the evening, log on to highplainsdailynews.com. Now you can listen to the Conservative Commandos from any phone by calling 832-999-1199. Our next guest, John Guandalo, is the founder of understandingthethreat.com, an organization dedicated to providing strategic an operational threat-focused consultation, education and training for federal, state, and local leadership and agencies. Mr. Dalo is a 1989 graduate of the Naval Academy, and he took a commission as an officer in the United States Marine Corps. Welcome back to the Concerted Commander Radio Show, John. Thanks very much for having me, J.D. Appreciate it. And Rick. John, we are looking this Sunday at the 15th year anniversary of 9-11. You were an FBI agent when those planes crashed into the Pentagon and the World Trade Towers. Share some of the special things that you experienced during that 9-11 period and, and shortly after the planes crashed into the Pentagon. Um, well, when uh, on 9-11, I'd been in the uh, FBI for just over uh, five years. And uh, we were actually, I was one of the uh, assistant team leaders on the FBI SWAT team at that time. And uh, we were actually about uh, three hours south of Washington, D.C., um, doing some training uh, when we kind of figured out what was going on. And so we, uh, we uh, took the whole unit uh, back up towards D.C. And uh, there are a couple couple key memories for me one is coming up 395 which is uh in between the beltway around dc and coming into arlington virginia and kind of coming right to a point uh coming uphill right where you kind of crest a little area and we could see the pentagon and uh we were all kind of chattering on the radio because we were making plans uh based on information we were getting from the the office and we were kind of passing to everybody in the vehicles about what we were going to do. And, man, as soon as we crested that hill, just everything went uh, went quiet. And I think it was a pretty powerful moment for everybody because we saw right in front of us uh, what we had seen a few hours um, earlier in New York and then had heard over the radio what happened at the Pentagon. Now we were looking at it. Um, and then we were dispatched to a number of missions uh, over the next few days, but I, uh, at the time, was also a medic, a paramedic in the FBI, and so my duties for the next few days um, were doing recovery work at the uh, at the Pentagon and at that scene. And uh, the following Sunday, so about five days after 9-11, on Sunday, uh, we found a, a, a ring 
and um, it was a ring of a Naval Academy graduate, um, a guy named uh, uh, Captain Bob Dolan, Robert Dolan, and um, knowing how important that was to his family, I uh, broke protocol and uh, cleaned the ring um, and called the family because his name was inscribed inside and it just so happened the Washington Post uh, that day had pictures and names of all the uh, victims of the Pentagon and so I saw his name and it said Alexandria, Virginia so I literally just called information and got his family and um, at first they were you know, obviously, they've probably been beaten beaten down by the media wanting comments and things like that. Um, but once I explained to him who I was and why I was calling, um, his, uh, Bob's brother-in-law and another classmate actually met me at the uh, Naval Annex about an hour later. And uh, I was able to give him the ring. So that, for me, that... Um, not that 9-11 wasn't already pretty personal, uh, them having attacked us in the homeland and uh, especially our Pentagon, but something like that made it extremely personal to me. Well, well John, then you, that event, your experiences, I, I think helped you create this group called Understanding the Threat. Talk about what you're doing to educate Americans on radical Islam and the threats we face. Yeah, well, so um, after that, uh, shortly after 9-11, um, my boss at the FBI at the time was asked to stand up a new unit, and he asked me if I wanted to go with him, which was a, a very aggressive counterterrorism unit. And uh, so myself and some of my colleagues, several of us were on the SWAT team and had a lot of criminal investigative experience. And um, because of uh, two major investigations that I worked, um, the network of the jihadis here in the United States uh, became known to me, and I, I realized that uh, all of the major Islamic organizations in the United States are jihadis, um, without exception. And um, that was back in 2002 and into early '03, And so um, I started working with uh, offices around the country and realized uh, there was not an understanding of this network in the FBI. And so I sought to create a training program uh, inside the Bureau. And, and that just comes from my background as a Marine officer and as a, uh, a SWAT guy, you know, training people and teaching them. It, it's part of what you do. You can't fight a fight if you don't know who you're fighting and understand the best ways to go at it. So by the, I did this training program, but inside the Bureau, um, speaking truth about this threat was not necessarily welcome. And by 2008, I was kind of uh, not getting any traction and they had, um, they were not supportive of the continuing work I was doing. So the gentleman that, that had been working with me, who was in a fairly senior position inside the Department of Defense, recruited me out of the FBI to work for DOD. Um, and so I worked there uh, for a few years until this administration defunded all the programs we were doing. And uh, so in 2012, I started understanding the threat. And our focus is essentially twofold. One is to train and educate state and local officials, uh, specifically law enforcement, as well as citizens, and over the years, you know, as you all know, I've briefed former FBI, CIA, DIA directors, national security advisors, members of Congress, blah, blah, blah. But quite frankly, the, uh, the, the most impact we're having is at the state level. Um, and while we have made an impact in Congress and the work that uh, UTT has done, um, it's at the state level where people seem to be really coming to understand this and so the, the part part one of what we do is train and educate law enforcement and leadership at the governor's attorney generals as to how to deal with this threat um, and what the threat is 
and that it's at the local and state level we're going to win, but also working in uh, a number of states and showing them the strategy, both using law enforcement um, and, and all the means to identify and dismantle the jihadi threat using all means available. Uh, really, as I like to say, crushing the, the cockroaches um, the way they deserve to be crushed and make them, let it be known to them very clearly that they're not welcome here and we're going to do everything we can to uh, to uh, use prosecutorial means and all other means available to us to uh, push them out of our counties, our states, and our country. John, we're coming up on a commercial heartbreak for just a few minutes. Can you hold with us and, and carry that thought when we come back? Absolutely. This is J.D. Manier and Rick Trader coming to you live from the Concerted Commandos Radio Network Studios, WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia, and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeart Radio, and AM FM 24-7. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We are establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired of the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 2 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 on your AM dial, or around the world on the Internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our website, CCRSNetwork.com, for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where now even more newsmakers go to be heard. Since 2011, we have been calling for a national commitment from all Americans to participate in an annual event to honor all of the victims and their families who suffered during and after the most devastating event to ever take place on American soil. We all remember those horrible scenes of destruction on September 11th, 2001 that unfolded right before our eyes, either up front or on television. We continue to ask every American to participate in the united action of prayer, which is simply to stop whatever you are doing at precisely 9 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. to either observe one minute of silence or to offer a prayer to honor the memory of those who are directly affected by this unforgettable scene of destruction. Please include a prayer of thanks for living in a country where even something as horrific as 9-11 could not weaken our spirit. This year, we would like to ask one more thing as a show of unity since we are still fighting with the enemy who caused the 9-11 tragedy. Would you display the flag for the day at your home, on your car, bike, or anywhere you can display old glory? Let's show our enemies that we can still unite in our love for our country. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. This is J.D. Manier and Rick Trader, your host, coming to you live from the Conservative Commando Radio Network studios. And if you want to hear rebroadcast today's show, just check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com and ccrshow.com, or at noontime, log on to roarradio.net, and 11 p.m., log on to highplainsdailynews.com. You can listen to Concerted Commandos from any phone by calling 832-999-1199. Our guest is John Guandalo, founder of understandingthethreat.com. He has strategies at all levels of the community to defeat the enemy, and we're talking about radical Islamic jihadism and talking about 9-11. Welcome back, John. Well, thanks very much for having me. John, our host, Rick Trader, has a couple questions for you. Okay. John, uh, thanks for joining us. John, the, that story about the ring, wow. I mean, 
How long was it before you could tell that story without losing it, getting choked up? Um, I'm still not sure I'm there yet, but uh, it's it's just a oh, it's just a great story, and uh, like I said, it made uh, it made 9/11 very personal for me in very unique ways. Especially since you were also a graduate of uh, the United States Naval Academy. Well, that's right, and uh, obviously the um, that. That made it a pretty huge deal, um, and knowing what the ring would mean to his uh, to his bride and uh, to his family, and and as a as a uh, kind of final chapter to that story, I was invited to go to his memorial at the uh, Naval Academy Chapel, mm. and uh, you know to walk into the room. Uh, under the chapel before the the memorial and to see Bob's wife, Lisa, and uh, other wives around her, and they all had their husband's rings on a gold necklace. Yeah, that was pretty... (laughs) That is, uh, you know, it was just amazing. It was beautiful. Uh, John, Uh, John, when you say the room under the chapel, do you mean where John Paul Jones is, is, uh, crypt is? Uh, it's actually it's uh, it's adjacent to that. The, there's like a little reception room under the uh, under the chapel. John Paul Jones's tomb is just adjacent to that. All right. Because obviously, I've been there, and you know, for anyone that's never visited the United States Naval Academy, you got to go. I've toured there a couple of times, and uh, the thing that I'll never forget is going into where John Paul Jones is in, in, in and where his uh, crypt lies and I'm just trying to visualize myself John uh, again the ring I think that's a terrific story what do you think would have happened if if somebody else had found that ring if if government had found that ring in the cleanup would would the family have possibly gotten it back or gotten it back so soon uh, no they certainly wouldn't have got it back the same day um, uh, it would have been in the chain of custody and would have eventually gone back and uh, but I'll tell you, to uh, to give it back the way I did and the way it was received by Bob's brother-in-law and his, his other classmate, it was powerful. And, uh, yeah, we had a, a real moment there. Um, and it was, you know, it's just, it's, it's one of those things I, just, I, I can't even explain. Uh, did did you ever powerful. meet Bob? Say that again. Did you ever have an occasion to meet Bob? Uh, I did not. Okay. Nope. Never knew him. I, I mean, just know about him from his children. And, you know, his son, Bo, actually ended up um, uh, interning for me when I was working for DOD. Wow. Um, and that was a really cool experience of, uh, you know, um, his mom kind of calling and saying, hey, you know, Bo is you know, uh, oh, getting ready to go to college and uh, he ended up going to Notre Dame and I just keep in touch with the family. It's been cool. Really amazing. John, as you may have heard, we, we run PSAs at our cost, something called the United Action of Prayer, where we're asking families and Americans around the country to take two minutes on September 11th to stop what they're doing just spend a moment of quietness or prayer, one at 9 a.m., the other at 11 a.m., to coincide with the crashing of the planes in the to World Trade Towers. We're also asking Americans to display the American flag that day. But, John, is 9-11 being forgotten? Um, you know, that's a good question. I... Uh you know, there's a great movie called In the Face of Evil about Ronald Reagan's uh, fight against communism and the way it ties the battle we're in now against the uh, global Islamic movement uh, to his fight is really beautiful. And I think it's something everyone should watch. I actually just talked to a state legislator last night from Kansas who's actually doing a, a viewing of it. What was the name of it again, John? 
Yeah, it's In the Face of Evil. It's an amazing documentary, very powerful. Uh, I would. It's one of the things I encourage everybody to watch when they ask, what should I do? Uh, because it, it it really does a good job at nailing what, what we're after. It's the same evil, just uh, under a different uh, guise. Um, but I share that with you in answer to your question. Have we forgotten 9-11? Um, I think shortly after 9-11 we failed to address the enemy. Um, I mean, on 9-11, uh, a guy that was working in the White House, Suhail Khan, uh, who ended up serving two successive Treasury secretaries, is the son of Mabuk Khan, who's one of the most powerful and influential Muslim brothers who ever uh, came to the United States. Uh, and he was working in the Bush White House and, as I said, served two secretaries of Treasury. And the guy who's, who, uh, Muzumil Siddiqui, who sat behind the bushes at the 9-11 memorial at the National Cathedrals, one of the most senior living Muslim brothers in the United States. So right after 9-11 and really before 9-11, uh, the bad guys started influencing how we were going to fight the war and huh, why we, we lost in Iraq and Afghanistan and why under the current administration uh, we're not only not fighting the enemy, we are openly aiding and abetting the enemy. Um, and, and senior members of our government are acting in a treasonous uh, manner. And so uh, that that's the answer I would give you. I don't think we've forgotten 9-11. I don't think we're, we're fighting a war. Can we win that war? Can we defeat terrorism? Of course we can. But you got to actually, you got to identify the threat. The, the threat uh, is, is Islam and those who want to... Uh, impose Sharia on the world. And so what we need to do is uh, um, deal with it. And the fact that we have evidence already entered into the largest terrorism trials in American history that demonstrate that the most prominent Islamic organizations in America are part of that network, they need to be prosecuted, they need to be hammered, they need to be shut down, and we need to seize uh, everything that's theirs. And the fact that we're not only not doing that, we're encouraging these groups bringing them into the White House, and the President of the United States is making promotional videos for them, that's treason. I don't know. That's, there's no other way to talk about it. Hey, John, how do I put this? You said that we, we lost in Iraq and wherever. I, I think we won in Iraq. Militarily, we won that war, but politically, we gave that victory back. Especially this administration is responsible for that. Your thoughts on it? Well, I think we lost the war in 2005 when our State Department wrote constitutions in Iraq and Afghanistan that created Islamic republics in Korea. Mm -hmm. It's exactly what Al-Qaeda's regional goals were in both of those places. So we surrendered in 2005. Uh, the fact that our government leaders didn't have a clue as to what they were doing uh, didn't matter to the enemy. Um, so that's kind of those are my thoughts. We, we lost a long time ago. We just, it took us 10 years to figure it out. Mm. John Guandal, founder of understandingthethreat.com. We want to thank you so much for John, uh, so much for joining us, John. We appreciate that. Please tell our audience how they can keep track of your work. Uh, they can uh, contact us at understandingthethreat.com. We have uh, the book, Raising a Jihadi Generation, and the DVD. Um, uh, understanding the threat to America. Hey, John, hold on. I want to. We have to go to a break, but I want to talk to you offline. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And you are listening. Thank you so much for joining us. You are listening to the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with JD Manier and yours truly, Rick Trader, coming to you from the studios of the Conservative Commandos Radio Network at WNJC 1360 in Philadelphia and around the world on the internet with. American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeartRadio, AM, FM 24-7. On the other side, we're going to be speaking with Seton Motley. He's the head of an organization that I love. It's called Less Government. Don't go away, J.D. and I will be right back with our next guest. They say I'm lessy, but I this is Rick Trader, host of the Conservative Commandos Radio Show. 
And I'm John Forsyth, owner of WNJC Radio. Fellow patriots, the Conservative Commandos radio show is for conservatives, about conservatives, and by conservatives. We are patriots who want to take our country back from the likes of Barack Obama, Harry Reid, George Soros, and Nancy Pelosi. But we can't keep up this fight without your critical support today. Can you help? Please go to www.helpccrs.com right now and make a donation by credit card or PayPal. That's www.helpccrs.com. Our goal is to expose the liberal agenda and distortions. We are fighting to spread the truth about political issues, political leaders, and conservative issues and values. Our hosts are not paid. In fact, we buy our own airtime, studio time, and pay our own expenses. We created the show because we are trying to make a difference. So can you help the CCRS expose the truth in 2014 and beyond? Go to www.helpccrs.com. Help keep the Conservative Commandos radio show on the air by going to www.helpccrs.com and make a donation today to return our country to the conservative roots created by our founding fathers. Since 2011, we have been calling for a national commitment from all Americans to participate in an annual event to honor all of the victims and their families who suffered during and after the most devastating event to ever take place on American soil. We all remember those horrible scenes of destruction on September 11th, 2001 that unfolded right before our eyes, either up front or on television. We continue to ask every American to participate in the united action of prayer, which is simply to stop whatever you are doing at precisely 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. to either observe one minute of silence or to offer a prayer to honor the memory of those who are directly affected by this unforgettable scene of destruction. Please include a prayer of thanks for living in a country where even something as horrific as 9-11 could not weaken our spirit. This year, we would like to ask one more thing as a show of unity since we are still fighting with the enemy who caused the 9-11 tragedy. Would you display the flag for the day at your home, on your car, bike, or anywhere you can display old glory? Let's show our enemies that we can still unite in our love for our country. I'm Pastor Christina Laminier. I'm a concerned mother and grandmother, and I urge you to vote for Donald Trump. Our Commander-in-Chief's highest priority is to secure the safety and freedom of Americans of every race, creed, and color. Trump will solve the ISIS crisis quickly and utilize the talents of people like Mayor Rudy Giuliani to restore law and order in our streets. Donald Trump will build the wall, secure our borders, and bring back jobs and prosperity to America by slashing tax taxes, cutting government waste, stamping out political correctness, harnessing our abundant natural resources, unleashing the patriotism and genius of we the people. Always remember, there is a special place in heaven for followers of Jesus Christ. For more information, log on to INRASuperPAC.com. INRA SuperPAC paid for this ad and is solely responsible for its content, not authorized by any candidate or its committee. What does it take to be the leader in production systems technology? To be the one company that solves production problems at any plant, for any product, and with any technology? It takes a 30-year record of success. It takes total mastery of complex technologies with a history of delivering success every time without fail. Only one company can claim that high ground in manufacturing line optimization, data automation, and systems integration, and that's Philadelphia Control Systems. In factories worldwide, Philadelphia Control Systems programs, software, and engineering solutions deliver optimal performance and output flow with a record that can't be matched. Any plant, any product, any technology. Philadelphia Control Systems, the leader in production automation since 1982. 800-335-9811. PCS4Automation.com. That's PCS, the number four, automation.com. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. 
We're establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired as I am about the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on WNJC Radio 1360 a.m. or around the world on the Internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our websites, ConservativeCommandosRadioNetwork.com and CCRN.com for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where even more newsmakers go to be heard. From the East Coast to the West Coast and around the world on the Internet. We're coming to you live from the CCRS studios, WNJC 1360. This is the Conservative Commandos Radio Show with your host, Rick Trader. The Conservative Commandos Radio Show, where the newsmakers go to be heard. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. This is J.D. Manier and Rick Trader. If you'd like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, just check out our website, crcrsnetwork.com and ccrshow.com. At noontime, log on to roarradio.net. At 11 p.m., log on to highplainsdailynews.com. And now you can listen to the conservative commandos from any phone by calling 832-999-1199. Our next guest, Seton Motley, is president of Less Government, an organization dedicated to, well, less government including protecting the First Amendment from government assault. He's a writer, television, and radio commentator, political and policy strategist, a lecturer, debater, and activist. Welcome back to the Conservative Commanders Radio Show, Seton. Thank you very much, sir. I, I was looking at an article you posted recently, and it talks about just how far the left has just passed outrage to simple boredom. As these institutions are, are just inundating us with, with this stuff. Uh, talk about a reset. Can we see a reset this fall as, as the left has dominated schools, colleges, universities, the media, and Hollywood? Talk about that. Well, yeah. What I, the, the news that got me thinking about this is something I actually first wrote about three months ago. What's happening is Google, which has been an Obama probably arguably, almost inarguably, the, the, the number one Obama crony uh, throughout the Obama administration has gotten more uh, of their staffers placed in the administration, has gotten more policy, uh, their preferred policies out of this administration than just about any other company in the United States. Uh, and what they're doing now is, of course, a lot of what they've received in policy from the Obama administration isn't via legislation, it's through Obama fiat. So, of course, a, a, the next president could undo all the giveaways to Google, the, the, which are awful, net neutrality and, and Title II reclassification, and they're working on one now about, you know, Obama, uh, Google makes 90-plus percent of their money collecting data on you and selling it, and, and the uh, Obama SEC is working on outlawing uh, competitors uh, doing what uh, what Google does with data. I mean, it's it's just insane. But the point is, all of this could go away if, say, a President Trump came in, appointed an SEC chairman that wanted to adhere to the law, and all of this would go away. So they've chosen sides in this tw in the 2016 presidential election. They like Hillary. And in June, I wrote a piece called "Google is rigging searches to benefit Hillary Clinton." And what they would, at the time, what you do is, and it, was, it started with a source fed, is the name of the website. They made a video, and then they went to Google, Bing, and Yahoo. Bing is Microsoft's search engine, 
And Yahoo, of course, is Yahoo, and they had their search engine. And he typed in things like Hillary Clinton IND as an indictment. If you go to Bing, you go to Yahoo back then, and you type that in, you got indictment as one of the suggested completions of your search. If you went to Google and typed in Hillary Clinton IND, you got Hillary Clinton India and Hillary Clinton Indiana as the first two, as the first two suggestions. And what's really funny is, if you went to Google Trends, for people who don't know, Google offers a service called Google Trends where you, you, you can see, they graph for you, the popularity of this search or that, this search term or phrase or that. If you typed in Hillary Clinton India or Hillary Clinton Indiana into Google Trends, there were so few searches for it, Google Trends couldn't even graph it. Yet it was the first two suggest it was the first two search suggestions when you type in Hillary Clinton IND on their own search engine. So this is a big this is a big deal in June, and of course Google immediately issued a statement saying we're not doing this. It's an algorithm. It's a search algorithm hiccup, and we're going to fix it. Well, well, see, see I, are, I got a comment real quickly, Seaton. Yeah, I'm from Indiana. Hillary Clinton didn't even beat Bernie Sanders here in Indiana, and the total votes she got in the primary were about one half of the votes that Donald Trump collected. And and yet, like you said, that is the first thing that comes up, not indictment searches right. and right. information. And there, were, and, there were, and there were others back then, too. Like, if you did Hillary Clinton CRI, you know, this was, June, remember, was, was the height of whether or not we, you know, we didn't know at the time that the FBI was also corrupt. Uh, we, so if you put in criminal indictment, you know, CRI for, for or, um, cr you know, criminal or, you know, anything, you got crime reform to 1994 and stuff like that. And, of course, on Google, you got criminal record and, and you know, criminal indictment and, and those sorts of things. So flash forward three months, and, of course, what's a hot topic now? Hillary Clinton's health. Everybody's talking about it. It's a big deal. You know, uh, of course, the, the media is not talking about it, but as Donald Trump pointed out in a tweet, the, the, the media won't cover it, but it's still a number one trending search. Well, and, and even uh, Trump's surrogate, Rudy Giuliani, said, there's a video online, Google Hillary Clinton uh, health, and, and you'll find the video, Hillary Clinton illness, um, and you'll, you'll find the video. Only there's one problem. Google is hiding popular Hillary Clinton health searches. You type in, for example, you type in Hillary Clinton H-E, and on, on, and on, uh, on uh, Google you get Hillary Clinton headquarters, Hillary Clinton health plan, and Hillary Clinton's health care plan. Uh, you do Bing, or, you, you know, it says Hillary Clinton's health, Hillary Clinton's health issues, and Hillary Clinton's health and weight. So, of course, they're still rigging the searches. Um, this has all been done. I, I have not done any positive searches, although it, it would, it, it, that doesn't serve as much of a purpose. It's the fact, look, you and I are engaged in politics on a, on a multi, you know, a, for living. We do it on a daily basis, a multiple time daily basis. This story about Google rigging stuff doesn't matter when it comes to us. Who it matters to is the people who have real jobs, regular jobs, you know, plumbers, electricians, barbers, who don't follow politics all the time. They Peyton, hear can, something can you, about Peyton, Hillary Can you hold that thought? We're coming up yep. on a hard radio break. We've got to run some commercials. Man, it's great stuff. Just hold on for a couple minutes, okay? Thank you, sir. This is J.D. and Rick Trader coming to you live from the Concerted Commandos Radio Network Studios, WNJC 1360, our flagship station in Philadelphia and around the world on the Internet with American Patriots Broadcasting, Talk Stream Live, SHR Media, K98 Talk, iHeart Radio, and AM FM 24-7. K98 
Conservative Commandos Radio Show is expanding to become the Conservative Commandos Radio Network. We are establishing a front line of conservative radio broadcasters and ironclad patriots to declare war against the madness of liberalism and the Obama administration. Are you tired of the disregard for our Constitution? Do you still have faith in the American dream? Are you looking for sensible, smart radio? If so, listen to the Conservative Commandos Radio Network every weekday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 2 to 6 p.m. on WNJC Radio, 1360 on your AM dial, or around the world on the Internet at WNJCRadio.com. Check out our website, CCRSNetwork.com, for rebroadcasts and network updates. We are the Conservative Commandos Radio Network, where now even more newsmakers go to be heard. Since 2011, we have been calling for a national commitment from all Americans to participate in an annual event to honor all of the victims and their families who suffered during and after the most devastating event to ever take place on American soil. We all remember those horrible scenes of destruction on September 11th, 2001 that unfolded right before our eyes, either up front or on television. We continue to ask every American to participate in the united action of prayer, which is simply to stop whatever you are doing at precisely 9 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. to either observe one minute of silence or to offer a prayer to honor the memory of those who are directly affected by this unforgettable scene of destruction. Please include a prayer of thanks for living in a country where even something as horrific as 9-11 could not weaken our spirit. This year, we would like to ask one more thing as a show of unity since we are still fighting with the enemy who caused the 9-11 tragedy. Would you display the flag for the day at your home, on your car, bike, or anywhere you can display old glory? Let's show our enemies that we can still unite in our love for our country. You can call the Conservative Commandos Radio Show at 856-227-1360. Your opinion counts at 856-227-1360. This is Congressman Alan West, and you're listening to the Conservative Commando Radio Show. This is J.D. Medea and Rick Trader. If you'd like to hear a rebroadcast of today's show, check out our website, ccrsnetwork.com ccrshow.com or at noontime log on to roarradio.net and at 11 p.m. log on to highplanedailynews.com You can listen to Concerted Commandos from any phone by calling 832-999-1199 We're talking with Seton Motley President of Less Government Welcome back to the show, Seton Thank you, sir So I wonder if we type in Hillary Ill I-L-L if it's going to bring up Illinois I, I actually tested that, and and actually, there's a few there's a few articles about her health, so maybe they did get something done a little better. Uh, let's continue on. What, yeah. What do we get? Well, the, the point I wanted to make was when we had to go to break was, like I said, it doesn't matter to you and I because we know what's going on, it, and 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 it's not because these people are less than us that they have real jobs and and have to do real things with families and stuff like that. You know, like I said, the plumbers, electricians, the barbers, those types of people who don't follow politics all the time. And they hear something of, gee, maybe Hillary's got an issue with her health. And they go and they look up, you know, they, they use Google, which is overwhelmingly the number one search engine as far as size and number of users. And they get these ridiculous, you know, results, uh, these suggestions from Google. They, think, they walk away thinking, oh, there's no problem. There's no, you know, they don't get the full picture of what's going on in the 2016 presidential race. They, they get this, oh, it's, a, it's all I'm getting is, is there, there, must, there must be nothing wrong with her health. She's, I'm getting results on her health care plan and, and, you know, and her headquarters, her campaign headquarters. So I guess she's okay. I guess everything's fine. And it's those people uh, who, by the way, outnumber us about a billion to one, uh, that, that, that are affected by this, uh, this, this gerrymandering, this rigging of, of data uh, by Google. See, what happens when you, you know, it's such a big issue, I think, among conservatives, is this death body count. It's grown by about four or more people this summer. Uh, what, what do we get on that? Yeah, How and, and that's another story that? that came out recently where you search for Hillary Clinton body count and you get, <laughs> you get, you get uh, all kinds of weird results. You get, you get uh, where is it, I'm, I'm trying to find it. 
uh, you know, you Clinton body and the results. Oh, my favorite. This, this that's what that's what it was. Uh, you put in Clinton body count and you get because <laughs> it's, it's relatively close to my house. You get an auto body repair place in Clinton, Maryland. That's that's <laughs> that's the result. And as we know, going back to the '90s, there are a lot of people that have died under very strange circumstances. Uh, you know, in in the Clinton orbit, I'm not accusing anybody of anything. What I'm saying is, and I will I will uh, steal from Rush Limbaugh on this. He says, "You ask the average person. Ask yourself, how many people that you know have died under weird circumstances in your life?" Most of you will say zero. I say zero. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe one. If, you know, if, if you're if you're really unfortunate. They have a list that's a mile long, and you start to wonder at some point, that's an awful high body count. Just just on sheer number alone, it would make you go, it would give you pause. Let's put it that way. And again, if you search on Google for information on this, you get nothing. You get auto body repair places in Clinton, Maryland. <laughs> okay, I got one for you. Crooked Hillary. Are, are oh, yeah, that's, us, that's another one. Are they going to give us winding roads in, on the top of the world, winding roads in Tibet? Is that what they're going to come up with? Well, well, the, 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 yeah, uh, you know, uh, a, a bad jigsaw puzzle. Um, <laughs> you know, th- th- that was one where they, they searched Lion Ted for Ted Cruz, for the, for the name Donald Trump, Chris uh, and Ted Cruz, and Crooked Hillary. And Lion Ted, Google popped right up with Ted Cruz. Uh, you put in crooked Hillary, it did not pop up Hillary Clinton. Oh, hi. Yeah, you know, she's supposedly named after Sir Edmund Hillary. Uh, even, though he, even though he didn't climb the mountain until she was four. And he was, a, <laughs> he was an absolute global nobody until then. Yes. Well, that's because her parents must have had a crystal ball, you know? Yes, yes. Or, or they were really big fans of, uh, I forget what he was, a college professor in England or something. I don't remember what he was. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He, you know, she, she lies about. You know, uh, this is my real quick. This this was to me the quint, the, the ultimate uh, Bill Clinton lie, and it wasn't any of the ones anybody thinks of. I saw him on Larry King on CNN right after the he won re-election, and and Larry King said, uh, you know, lots made about you jogging through McDonald's drive-throughs. He goes, yeah, you know, hold on, Larry. Now, I, since that happened, I have not eaten in a McDonald's once, not a single time. Well, let's go to the videotape. <laughs> Got it to go. <laughs> now, why would you lie about something as stupid as that unless your first reaction to anything at all is to lie? Well, and it's it, because he does that he's, and gotten, does that. he's gotten away with it time and time and time again. You know, go back to I didn't inhale the I didn't inhale lie. I mean, oh, you know, got, I met I met Christopher Hitchens and spent an evening watching him get drunk and then drove him back to his hotel in Austin, <laughs> Texas. And he was at Oxford when Bill Clinton was at Oxford. And, and so his loathing of the Clintons, even though he was a leftist, goes way back because he just did not like Bill Clinton back at Oxford in college. And he said, yes, remember that ridiculous lie I did not inhale? Well, he was allergic to cigarettes. He was allergic to smoke. He couldn't inhale anything. However, at Oxford, he was not averse to eating br- uh, chocolate brownies chock full of marijuana leaves. <laughs> <laughs> so, you he know. He didn't inhale, but yeah, he, he did swallow. Yeah, he, he, you know, he lies. Uh, again, these, both of these people lie as their initial reaction to anything. Hey, they lie God. about anything Great, everything great and small. Hey, Seton, I wanted to get your reaction. This is totally off topic. I hope you don't mind, JD. But I wanted oh, to get ahead. I wanted to get your reaction to this coughing fit, and she's saying it's because of allergies. Seton, I'm suffering from allergies. I have runny eyes, itchy eyes, uh, sneezing, you name it. But no coughing. There's no coughing. Well, well here's the thing. She was having cough. She's been having coughing fits for months which way predates any allergy season you can think of. It's, you know, February and March. Everything's dead because it's freaking 20 degrees everywhere. There is no pollen. To what are you having an allergic reaction in February? And yet she's having coughing fits in February. So I think, again, that claim is highly dubious. 
Well, I bro- we started JT and I st- when we started the show, we were talking about it, and I make mention that while she's got a smoker's voice, she's got this deep raspy voice, she's got this terrible cough. I think it has more to do with smoking than it does with allergies. I've actually just watched a video by a doctor who, who made a very pretty credible case. Coughing is a precursor or a, a, a symptom, early symptom of Parkinson's disease. Really? And you combine that with her inability, it appears, to, you know, I'm sorry, anybody that wrote that many emails about yoga shouldn't require assistance into cars and upstairs. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, did, I did yoga once. It's pretty physically imposing. I don't understand if you're doing it that regularly why you need that much assistance. So the balance issues, the, the flexibility issues, and the coughing, apparently, which I didn't know, all indicate early, uh, early onset of Parkinson's disease. Apparently, again. Well, as, as, as you're doctor. mentioning it, I'm, I'm Googling early signs of Parkinson's. And let me see. Uh, t- uh, here are the 10 signs that you might have the disease. Tremor, shaking, small handwriting, uh, loss of smell, trouble sleeping, trouble moving or walking. Constipation, eh, well, might explain something. Softer, low voice, a masked face, dizziness or fainting. She's had that for sure. Uh, hunched over, being hunched over. But uh, I don't see anything about coughing here. Coughing? Uh, you know, let, me, let me try something else. Let me try WebMD. WebMD. Uh, symptoms. Apparently, what this guy said was it, it affects your respiratory system, Parkinson's. Okay. Hey, Seaton, Rick, Rick, real quick. What, what yeah. about prelapses? She could while away the hours. <laughs> uh, well, well, you know, again, she, she, I think that story was she said, I don't recall 37 times. Well, didn't FBI she do that? Too. Did, didn't oh. she do that during, what was it, way back when, when there oh, was yeah, a yeah, yeah, travel gate yeah, or Limbaugh, something? Rush Limbaugh did that, uh, I don't recall, my brain is jello parody song in the 90s. <laughs> yeah. About some, of, about some issue or other. And and somebody, I can't remember who it was, darn it, someone was being interviewed and said, oh, it was Kathleen Willie. I saw it on her Facebook page. She said, I was working at the White House when I heard people coaching Hillary Clinton on how to properly say I don't remember the questions she didn't want to answer. I could do a lot of thinking. I could be another Lincoln. (laughs) Hey, Seton, we got to run, but we want to thank you so much for joining us. Seton Motley, please tell our audience how they can keep up with your work. Uh, Please go to lessgovernment.org. You can sign up for our newsletter. Uh, We're not like Google. We don't sell your data. Um, and you can follow me on Twitter at Seton Motley, S-E-T-O-N-M-O-T-L-E-Y. Let, I'm just reading this. The primary symptom of, symptoms most commonly associated with Parkinson's disease are tremor. Not all persons with PD suffer tremor, but this is a common symptom. I couldn't, you know, I still can't find anything about coughing. But again, oh well. Seton Motley, always love having you come on because I always love saying less government. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Have a great week, guys. You take care. God bless. God bless. JD, I want to thank you for sitting in today as my co host. I also want to thank our other guests today, Jason Sneed, John Guandello. I want to thank Mr. John Forsythe for working the boards and keeping the flies off me today. John, you did a great job. JD, I want you to I want to thank you for sitting in today as my co-host. It was a pleasure. But for right now, we gotta run, we gotta go. Take care. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow on the radio.